Let's all stand up and welcome Apostle Dutch Sheets to come and lead us into this revival anointing. Thank you. You can be seated. Thanks. Well, that was awesome. Awesome. I will be very brief. I will share more in the morning, but I'll be brief. You know, Chuck and I, we tag team, especially. Uh, we don't do many of, of the evening and morning on this this tour we've been on, mostly just one night. And we tag team for about 30 minutes each. Since we're doing the morning also, we're doing it just a little different. I felt like he had the bulk of what the Lord wanted to say tonight, and it was um, really good, Chuck. And, um, you know, I think everybody ought to have to do what I did today at least once in their life. <laughs> I went left my hotel at 7.30 to go to the airport, and I waited there till about 1. Flight was supposed to leave at 9.45, and they kept moving it 15 minutes at a time. And by 1 o'clock, we realized I was going to miss the connection in Phoenix. You have to go all over the country to get here. And I called my daughter and said, get me a car immediately, and I'm going to run to the rental car place. And everybody should have to drive from San Diego to here between the hours of noon and 7 o'clock. <laughs> to speak for 15 minutes. <laughs> it was... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I understand why they say the 405 can be a parking lot. I understand that. I understand it completely. You know, we have come to, as Chuck said, we have come to realize on this tour the significance of this state. I mean, we've always known that, and I know you know that. But the Lord is highlighting it in a very significant way for us. And I'm going to read you a dream in just a minute that I feel like highlights it again. And I think I'll share a little in the morning uh, about uh, what the Lord has said to us uh, in, the, in the past two nights. Not just uh, California, but in Las Vegas. Can you imagine a word of the Lord coming that would say Las Vegas is going to be a gate of the glory, for the glory of the Lord? That's what he said prophetically. Amazing, isn't it? But anyway, it seems like God is coming to visit uh, uh, some of the places that uh, you wouldn't necessarily have expected just in the natural sense but he is he is let me share with you quickly the three things the Lord said to Chuck when he spoke to him that we were to do this uh, at first he said he thought we were to go back to all 50 states which we did in 03 and 04 and since then I think both of us have probably been to all 50 states on our own I've been to all 50 states numerous times Sometimes I feel like Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. But then as we prayed into it, the Lord showed us not that we weren't didn't, to go to all 50 states, but to touch all the states by going to several regions and gathering. And when he, when he, when he, said that I, I, I said what has the Lord told you we're to do I was very excited when when he said this is what I heard because I believe in Chuck's prophetic gifting 
when he says the Lord's told him something, it's, it's very accurate. And he said, I heard three things. I heard go and prepare the land for awakening. And that wasn't, you know, God's been preparing this nation for an awakening through intercession for, for many years. So it wasn't like, uh, you know, start over or wasn't, it wasn't in the same way that God had been saying it as we have prayed to prepare the land for many years. But what I heard was in the sense of, of uh, when the Lord came to Abraham and said, next, this, next year at this time, Isaac will come. So there'd been a preparation season for 24 years. He'd been waiting and preparing but finally, the Lord said, it's time. And this next year, at this time, Isaac will come. That's what I heard in my spirit, that the Lord was saying, it's time. It's, it's time. And gather the intercessors, gather the prophetic company, and make decrees and pray into it, because it's time. So that's what we're doing. And the second thing the Lord said was to release the hovering of his spirit. That was very exciting for me because every time I hear the word hovering, I think of Genesis 1, when Holy Spirit hovered at creation. King James says Holy Spirit was moving over the face of the deep. But the word hovering there is a birthing term. It's a, actually a reproductive term. In Hebrew, that word rakaf is used to describe a husband hovering over his wife in the act of marriage. It is literally a reproductive word. So when Jesus was speaking, let there be, Holy Spirit was releasing his power, taking the words of Jesus, which in elsewhere in scripture are called seeds, and bringing forth what Jesus was decreeing. So Holy Spirit moving or hovering over the earth is, is a sign that he is about to birth something. If he's hovering in America, it's because he's about to birth something in America. For, for the Lord to say, go release the hovering, said to me, I'm about to birth something. The counterpart word in Greek is used three times in the New Testament to describe the same type of bringing forth or birthing as Holy Spirit's power is being released. And one of those places is when Mary uh, was told she's going to bring forth the Messiah. And she said, how can this be? I'm a virgin. He's, the angel said, Holy Spirit's going to hover around you and envelop you in his glory and you're going to conceive. It's also used on the Mount of Transfiguration when Holy Spirit hovered around the Lord and released his glory and transformed him in, but with his glory. But it's also used in Acts 5 when Peter was ministering and it says they tried to get in the, uh, they tried to get in his shadow and they were healed when, when they were overshadowed. But in Greek, it doesn't really say his shadow healed them. It says when they stepped into the overshadowing or hovering episkiazo, same word of Holy Spirit. Same word to describe what happened with Mary. When they stepped into the hovering, Holy, Peter was speaking, Holy Spirit began to move, began to be released from him. And when they stepped into the hovering, miracles would happen. We're moving into that era when Holy Spirit's going to move in such a way that you'll be praying for people, but he won't be limited to the touch. He'll be released just out from your words. Your faith will begin to release hovering and they'll step into that and they'll be healed. 